Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here tonight to hear directly from your word. We're asking, Lord, you give us the assistance and the support, the illumination and enlightenment of the Holy Spirit, that your word will be plain and clear, applicable and profitable for everyone tonight. In Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, that everything that comes from your word with the explanation, interpretation, application will go straight to every believer's heart in Jesus' name. And those who have not known you, the word will wake every, everyone up so that we will look unto Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer, and they'll have the connecting faith to be saved in Jesus' name. For those who are weak and for those who are backsliding, I pray that your word will quicken the spirit of everyone in Jesus' name. Bless all, one and all. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Another amen. Tonight we're coming to First Corinthians chapter 9. Please open your Bible. I was studying from verse 1 to verse 15. But I'll start with verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ? Our Lord, I not see my work in the Lord. As we come to the beginning of this chapter, that is from verse 1 to verse 15, you will find a lot of questions that Paul the Apostle asked the brethren at Corinth because there were some of them that were doubting or that were misplacing or misinterpreting the position and the place of Paul the Apostle. They made a lot of carnal comparisons. Paul, Apollos, Peter, other people, the planter, the waterer, and the one that brought them to the Lord and the one discipling them. And because of those comparisons, Paul the Apostle wanted to re-establish the calling of God and the mission of the Word and the ministration he had urged unto them. And because of that, he was going to talk about his commitment to the heavenly vision. And in doing that, he spoke straight to their hearts. You find here he's saying, Am I not an apostle? He shouldn't have been asking them such a question. If they had respected his apostleship and responded properly the way they ought to respond. And so he asked them, think about this. Turn this over in your mind. Am I not a saint one? The apostle is a saint one. He is commissioned. And he's sent with a message. And he's sent to a congregation. Or he's sent to a community. Or he's sent to a country. Or he's sent to many nations. And he says, have I not been sent? You remember when the Lord called him to come to Corinth. The Lord said, be not afraid. Speak. Because I have much people in this place. The Lord sent him there. And the Lord sent him to other places too. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Couldn't I spend my time the way I want to spend my time? Couldn't I relax? Couldn't I rest? Couldn't I retreat? And couldn't I have a release from the work and be free? 
and then come out when I want to come out and preach when I want to preach and sleep when I want to sleep. Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ, our Lord? You think about Peter, he saw the Lord after he rose from the dead. And you think about James and John, they saw the Lord after he rose from the dead. And he said, if you are comparing me with them, Paul the Apostle said, have not I seen the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, and not ye my work? in the lord he says look at the corinthian church look at every individual how are you converted is it not because i gave me to preaching the word of god and then you tasted of the work of grace and the word of grace you were saved think about every family and think about the whole church are you not my work in the lord he was going to talk to them he was going to enlighten them on the exemplary commitment he had to the heavenly vision that's what we're talking about tonight the exemplary commitment to the heavenly vision we're dividing the message to three parts number one the questionnaire for proper apostolic stature when you want to go for probably an interview and you want to have an employment you are handed a questionnaire they want to know your name they want to know your date of birth they want to know uh, where you are coming from they want to know your education level uh, they want to know your curriculum vita a they want to see your experience before they employ you and then we call that a questionnaire and here paul the apostle is saying let's go through the questionnaire my date of birth in the lord Am I seeing the Lord and my commitment and consecration to the Lord and the places I've gone and the work I have done and the experience that I have and the claim I lay hold on that Jesus is my Savior and Jesus is my shepherd, Jesus is my sin bearer, Jesus is my substitute and Jesus is the one that sent me forth and gave me a, a, and gave me a work to do. The questionnaire for proper apostolic stature. And you can say the same thing if you are a member of the body of Christ and you can say, I got born again, I repented, I gave my life to the Lord, I faced persecution, I faced temptation, and by the grace of God, I stood. And then I've been witnessing, I've been evangelizing. You can also fill in your questionnaire. If you're a minister of the gospel, the questionnaire is before you too. And you can say, here is the time I was born again. Here is the time I was sanctified and was baptized some field with the Holy Ghost and there's the first place I serve the Lord as a house fellowship leader as a zona leader as a pastor as a coordinator and as an overseer here is what I have done and these are my converts that brother is still standing that sister is still standing you can fill in the question here for your proper apostolic stature apostle just means the saint one and then point number two the questions on paul's appointed stewardship he was serving the lord and he had service in the church and he had service everywhere and his stewardship he was asking question now about his appointed stewardship he knew what the lord had called him to do and he could say by the grace of god i did with all my heart and i did with all sincerity and i did with all faithfulness and he could fill in all the answers to those questions and even the corinthians they could fill in the form for him as he asked them the various questions point number three the quality of practical approved sacrifice the quality of approved sacrifice that is practical practical visible 
practical, easy to be seen, practical, verifiable. Paul the Apostle began to talk about the approved sacrifice that he offered unto the Lord. And I pray that what we are looking at today, as it was true for Paul the Apostle, will be true for you. And the Spirit of God will lift you up and the Spirit of God will move you forward that you too, you have a proper calling, a proper commitment, a proper consecration and then you'll be fruitful in Jesus' name. I will be fruitful. The Lord make every one of us fruitful in Jesus' name. Let's come to point number one now. Point number one, the questionnaire for proper apostolic stature. We're coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ, our Lord? And not ye, ye Corinthian believers, ye Corinthian church, are ye not my work in the Lord? Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, If I be not an apostle unto others, of course it was, it was an apostle to the church of Thessalonica. It was an apostle to the church also in Philippi. That's the place where he was in prison after he cast out that evil spirit. It was an apostle to the Ephesians. And as you look at all the epistles that he wrote, he wrote to them as an apostle by the will of God, an apostle by the word of God. He said, am I not an apostle? If I be not an apostle to others, let's even forget all other people yet doubtless I am to you an apostle to you for the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord now Paul the Apostle is going to give us various areas of his life sections of his life assurances of his life and the evidence of his life that you will know that i will know that the corinthians will remember that the lord called him and he had proper apostolic stature it was not any way less than the apostle peter or Apostle John, or Apostle James, or any of the other apostles, he had the proper apostolic stature. How was he called? Look at Acts chapter 9, we're reading from verse 10. Acts chapter 9, reading from verse 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias... And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. Verse 11. In verse 11, And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street, which is called Street, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. The Lord mentioned his name. It wasn't somebody that just appointed himself and just ran. The Lord pinpointed him. And the Lord showed where he was. And then the Lord said, Behold, he prayed. He knew he was praying after he had met the Lord. And then we come to verse 12. In verse 12, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. And then in verse 13, it says, Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he had done to the saints at Jerusalem. Ananias didn't know that Paul, Saul had surrendered, and Saul had confessed, and Saul had turned, and Saul had been transformed, and Saul had become a new creature in Christ. He was still looking at Saul of Tarsus as the old man, the old creature with the old life, a sinner, a persecutor, an injurious person. And he said, I have heard how much evil those evil evil things have been forgiven and they have been forgotten. Look at what Christ said in verse 14. Verse 14, and here 
uh, and here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all that call upon thy name that's what Anna said and now in verse 15 and but the Lord said unto him go thy way is a chosen vessel unto me go thy way is connected with me now go thy way is converted unto me now go thy way is cleansed and is a clean vessel now i have chosen him he now belongs to me he is now in the kingdom to bear my name before the gentiles and before kings and before the children of israel and so we learn about his birth and he could say, this is where I was converted, and this is where my life turned around. I put the question to you. Do you have the remembrance of where you were born again? Do you have the remembrance of how you repented, how you were connected with the Lord, how you were converted to the Lord? Can you tell us, can you tell the Corinthians, can you tell the church how your life turned around and you became a new convert and a new creature in Christ, a totally transformed person and the Lord could bear witness concerning you. You are a chosen vessel. Look at chapter 22 acts chapter 22 i'm reading from verse 12 is now recounting what happened at the time when ananias came and won ananias a devout man according to the law having a good report of all the jews which dwelt there but statue says came he came unto me and stood and said unto me brother saul brother saul they recognized my conversion they recognized the change and even ananias a respected believer among the jews he came in and he called me brother he knew the lord told him about my conversion and then he said receive thy sight he said i even got i got a miracle of salvation and i got a miracle of healing and it says the same hour i looked up upon him and then it says in verse 14 and he said the God of our fathers has chosen thee the God of our fathers had chosen thee the Lord Jesus Christ saved him and chose him and then God the Father chose him as well that thou shouldest know his will that thou shouldest know his word that thou shouldest have the fullness of the gospel that thou shouldest have the mystery of the gospel that had been hidden from the beginning of the world and see that just one and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth look at verse 15 in verse 15 for thou Thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. He was uh, giving uh, the Corinthians his credentials, how he came to know the Lord, how he had been following the Lord, and how he had been serving the Lord, and how his call was not accidental. That although the believers were afraid to preach to him or to connect with him, the Lord Jesus Christ himself came to to him and he said the father chose me i said the son god the son also chose me in acts chapter 13 we're looking at verse 2 acts chapter 13 verse 2 and as they ministered to the lord and fasted the holy ghost said remember the father god the father had chosen him and remember the lord jesus christ had chosen and sent him and remember now the holy ghost said separate me barnabas and saul for the work whereunto i have called them called and chosen and commission then in verse 3 we're told in verse 3 and when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them they sent them away and then we're told in verse 4 it says in verse 4 so then so they being sent forth by the holy ghost sent forth by the holy ghost the apostle is a saint one is sent with a commission 
is sent with a message is sent to fulfill a mission is sent and he has a ministry and now we are told is sent forth by the holy ghost departed unto Seleucia, and from there sailed to cyprus and when he did he knew that now the lord had affirmed and confirmed him to be a saint one a commissioned one an apostle romans chapter one reading from verse one in romans chapter one reading from verse one paul is servant of jesus christ called to be an apostle separated chosen devoted and committed unto the gospel of god very clear then as paul the apostle filled in his questionnaire he began to tell them from the time of his being born again and to the time of being called and to the time of being commissioned and now he separated completely to the apostleship in the ministry look at verse 5 in verse 5 it says by whom we have received grace and apostleship we receive grace we also receive the apostleship for the obedience to the faith among all nations for his name for his name that is his name's sake let's come to second corinthians chapter 12. second corinthians chapter 12 we're reading from verse 11 if somebody is going to be an apostle an apostle in the real sense commissioned by the lord sent by the lord one of the qualities or qualifications of those apostles is that they saw the lord jesus christ and the signs of apostleship was fulfilled in them because if anybody just went out and there is no sign and there are no wonders and is just claiming apostle 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 they say but where are your signs apostle must have a sign look at second corinthians chapter 12 verse 11 i am become a fool in glory ye have compelled me for i ought to have been commended respected recognized of you for in nothing am i behind the very chiefest apostles do i be nothing he said in myself i am nothing but when you think about it as the lord called peter and john and matthew and all those other people he called me too as the lord commissioned them one by one the chiefest of the apostles he called me too as the lord anointed them and equipped them to, with authority and power to cast out devils heal the sick and preach the gospel and raise the dead he called me too and he anointed me too and so he tells us now in verse 12 it says truly without any shadow of doubt the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience in signs in wonders and mighty deeds you see as you look at paul the apostle you will see all the gifts of the spirit operating in his life and all the works of miracles operating in his ministry like it was in the life in the ministry of peter or in the ministry of all the other apostles he said the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience that's in all perseverance in signs and wonders and in mighty deeds let's come to galatians chapter one reading from verse one galatians chapter one reading from verse one paul an apostle not of men neither by man but by jesus christ and god the father who raised him from the dead you see the assurance here you see the certainty here and you and you see the persuasive way he put it he said i am an apostle 
and I'm not made by man. I didn't go to Jerusalem for them to lay hands on me so that I will be an apostle. I didn't go to either Peter or James or any of those people to lay hands on me and commission me to be an apostle. Even in the Antioch church, it wasn't, a, you know, a committee that interviewed me. The Holy Ghost spoke directly. And then he says, now, with all that assurance and with all that evidence, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and by God the Father who raised him from the dead. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb, called me by his grace, called me even me called me paul the apostle by his grace in verse 16 it says to reveal his son in me that i might preach him among the heathen among the pagans among the gentiles among the people where christ had not been named among the heathen immediately i conferred not for flesh and uh, blood he said do you remember peter when the lord called him he led all the nets and followed the lord immediately you remember when god when christ called james and john they left their father zebedee in the sheep and they left their nets and they followed immediately he said the same thing happened to me when the lord called me by his grace i conferred not with flesh and blood immediately I responded and he said he was an apostle and he was an apostle in Galatians chapter 2 we're reading from verse 7 Galatians chapter 2 verse 7 but contrary wise when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. Look at verse 8. It says, For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision. It's referring to the Jews that Peter was sent to the Jews. And the Lord wrought effectually, effectively in his life towards the circumcision, towards the Jews. It says, The same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. No doubt then he was. He was called, he was commissioned, and he was committed to that ministry of the apostle in First Timothy chapter 2, verse 7. First Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 7, whereunto I am ordained a preacher. He said, my ordination is not an ordination from seminary people, from theologians. The Lord himself ordained me. The Lord himself chose me. The Lord himself set me in the place I will be. And then it says, I speak the truth. In Christ Jesus, I lie not. What does he mean by that? This is the absolute truth that I was ordained a preacher and an apostle, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. And look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11. 2 Timothy chapter 1, reading from verse 11, whereunto I am appointed. I am appointed. There wasn't any shadow of doubt in the calling, in the commission, in the consecration of Paul the Apostle. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. In First Corinthians chapter 4, Reading from verse 15, it says, For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. Yet, you Corinthians, you might have many teachers, thousands of them, but you have just one father who begot you and brought you into the kingdom to become citizens of the kingdom. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. 
in second corinthians chapter 3 looking at it from verse 1 second corinthians chapter 3 reading from verse 1 do we again do we begin again to commend ourselves or need we as some others epistles letters of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you as i come to you at corinth do i need a letter of recommendation from philippi a letter of recommendation from Thessalonica? don't you know me have you not seen me from the day of your being born again into the kingdom of god and then in verse 2 in verse 2 it says ye are our epistle reaching in our hearts known and read of all men the stamp of our workmanship is upon you and when people see you Corinthians and they see your experience in the Lord and they see your stamina your stature and your standing and they see the gifts of the Spirit at Corinth they know the stamp of work of the workmanship that we the apostles had look at verse 3 in verse 3 for as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of christ ministered by us ministered by us reaching not with ink but with the spirit of the living god not in tables of stone but in fleshly tables of the heart of your heart he was telling them that if you bring the questionnaire as to my proper apostolic stature i can fill in everything from the time the lord met me on the way to damascus and all the experiences that followed and the work that was done and there you can say yes to everything because you can attest to everything that i'm telling you about my relationship with the lord and revelation i also have from the lord that's the questionnaire for proper apostolic stature coming from paul the apostle let's come to point number two now in point number two the questions on paul's appointed stewardship let's come back to first corinthians chapter nine and we're looking at verse three first corinthians chapter nine verse three my answer to them that do examine me is this obviously there from that verse some people were asking questions about the stage and the standing and the stature and the service and the sacrifice of paul the apostle and he said i'll give you an answer you examine me you investigate me you are asking questions about me where i have been what i am doing and the authority i have to do what i'm doing here is my answer to them that do examine me come to verse 4 now you will expect that he will give an answer like statements that will have full stop at the end but you know what paul the apostle did he answered their questions by questions and those questions he asked will lead them to the answer he says here is my answer in verse 4 have we, have we not power to eat and drink he was fasting many times he was hungry and he traveled all about and he said have we not power to rest somewhere have we not power to take our ease he was answering their question is he really an apostle is he really committed is he really commissioned is he really doing the work and then he answered that by a question have we not power to eat and to drink look at verse 5 another question to answer the question they were asking have we not power to lead about a sister that is a wife that is when he traveled because he wasn't married he traveled alone he said 
What do you think I have to travel alone? What do you think I didn't get married? What do you think that I'm just going like that with Barnabas? I have liberty to marry. If I want to marry, Paul said, but he did not because he was so committed to the work that he had been called unto. Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles and as the brethren of the Lord and Severs, that is, and Peter, when Peter traveled, uh, what Paul is saying here is that he traveled with his wife. And I could have done that he said look at verse 6 in verse 6 or I only am Barnabas have we not the power to forbear walking Paul the apostle was still walking as a tent maker and through that he walked in labor night and day to supply his needs and yet he'll preach everywhere he didn't miss any appointment and yet he wasn't receiving any kind of a benefit a material gain remuneration from the church at Corinth that's why he said or oh, I only and Barnabas have we not power to forbear walking look at verse 7 in verse 7 who goes a warfare any time at his own charges you know he was uh, answering their question is he an apostle how commissioned he, he, he is he how committed he is he how consecrated he is he and he's answering that those who are examining him is answering with questions who goes a warfare anytime at his own charges who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock he said i've not been taken Taking uh, your money, I've not been taking all that you have. And is that normal? Is that what everybody does? And who plants a vineyard and will not eat of the fruit? Who will take care of a flock and not take of the milk there? And then in verse 8, in verse 8, you understand? Question, question, question. And all those questions, he used them to answer the, uh, the their charges concerning him. Say, I these things as a man another question or say not the law the same also look at verse 9 in verse 9 it says for it is written in the law of Moses thou shalt not muscle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn does God take care for oxen is God taking care of animals is he not taking care of us the ministers of the gospel the preachers of the gospels the apostles that is sent forth does God take care of for oxen look at verse 10 in verse 10 it says or says it all together for our sakes question question the questions what to answer their own questions for our sakes no doubt this is written that he that ploweth shall shall plow in hope and that he that threshes in hope should be partaker of his hope that he is he shall reap the benefit of the work he is doing now you'll see that paul the apostle has done this in many of his epistles in answering questions he will ask a question back and then the answer will be obvious to everyone look at first corinthians chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 5 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 5. It says, Who then is Paul? Who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. He's asking their question because they were lifting up Apollos and they were saying, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos. And in trying to solve that problem and bring them into unity and bring them into fellowship and bring them to respect every minister as they ought to respect every minister he did that by questioning who is paul and who is apollos their ministers by whom you have 
believed and he tells us in verse 10 of that same chapter according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder I have laid the foundation and another builders thereon but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Let's come to chapter 11 of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, we're looking at verse 22. 2 Corinthians 11, we're looking at verse 22. At the Hebrews, so am I. Again, is is answering their question. Is is saying in which way am I inferior to any of the other apostles? It says, think about this. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they of the the seed of Abraham? So am I. Look at verse twenty three. In verse twenty three, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more he said i've traveled more than all of them i've seen a, a lot of things more than all of them i've gone to prison more than all of them i've endured shipwreck more than all the other apostles put together I've been stoned, I've been beaten with rod, I've been in the deep, I've been with false brethren, I've been with the Jews, and everywhere I have gone, there is nowhere where Christ had not been named that I reserved myself and I was uh, not willing to go. That's why he said, at the ministers of Christ, I am more in labors, more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prison more frequent, in deaths oft. He was convincing them of his apostleship by all the questions he was asking them. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, who is weak and I am not weak. Not only at Corinth, Thessalonica, and in Rome, and then in Ephesus, and in Philippi, and in Colossae, and in Laodicea, all those places that uh, I have, those have not seen by face, I'm reaching to them, and when they write to me, and they're weak, and they're suffering, and they're persecuted, I bear with them, I bear the pain with them, who is weak, and I am not weak. Who is offended and I born not? Look at verse 30. In verse 30, if I must needs glory, I will glory in the things in the which, in which concern mine infirmities. In verse 31, it says, The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. He's talking about himself and he's saying with all the questions you are asking, here is my question to you. Who has suffered of the apostles more than I've suffered? Who has labored of the other apostles more than I've labored? And who has traveled far and wide more than I've traveled? It was convincing them that when he got the ministry and when he got the commission, he put all his heart, all his mind, all his soul into the ministry that God had called him to. And I is going to ask them, but why are you not appreciative? And why are you not recognizing all that God has helped me to do? Galatians chapter 4, we're reading from verse 15. Again, he's still going to ask questions. And it's about his commitment and about their response or reaction to his commitment. He's saying in Galatians chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 15, where is then the blessedness you speak of? Question, question, question. Where is the blessedness you speak of for I bear you record that if it had been possible you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me he said when I first came to you and I preached the gospel to you and you saw that Jesus Christ is savior that there's no other way only Christ can save and your eyes were open you said I never saw anything like this in the scripture 
scriptures before i never heard anything like this a religion before and then you rushed in you were born again the peace that came to your heart and the new life that came to you and the new vision and revelation that came to you you were so blessed that you expressed it and now it says in verse 16 it says am i therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth, other people now they are bringing circumcision and they are bringing the Jewish law and the Jewish religion. And I'm talking about Christ, that Christ is all and in all. I'm talking about Christ, that Christ is the way, that Christ is the door, that Christ is the shepherd, that the only way for you to be saved and the only way for you to remain saved and the only way for you to enter into that heavenly kingdom is Christ and Christ alone that is the truth I might therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth let's come back to that verse 15 in that verse 15 it says where then is the blessedness you speak of what you called in your response to me what you called in your reaction to me why are you not a blessing and encouragement and upliftment unto me like you used to be I might become your enemy because I'm telling you the truth I suffer so that you can have all the fullness of the gospel he was trying to bring them back to where they ought to be now he tells us in first Thessalonians reading from chapter 2 verse 19 first Thessalonians chapter 2 reading from verse 19 again a question for what is our hope and or joy or crown of rejoicing and not even ye in the presence of our lord jesus christ at his coming what's paul the apostle saying paul the apostle is saying what's her hope what's her joy was a crown of rejoicing he said look at my life that's paul we're talking about as you look at paul all his friends in judaism he had forgotten them all these friends in the jewish religion he had abandoned them and he had no friend among the jews anymore the people that were his friends they are turned to be his enemy even his own countrymen his own countrymen the people that you to say that's our son his soul is militant and is fighting for the religion of our fathers they had abandoned him he had nobody he had no friend he had no acquaintance and he had no connection with the old friends and with the old life his only joy at the people that he brought to know the Lord that's why he was asking them he said you people I abandoned all my old friends I don't have any connection with my countrymen I don't have any connection with Tarsus where I came from even if I go there they might even try to stone me because I've given my all unto the preaching of the gospel and the preaching of the gospel is foolishness unto them and they will not accept now if i am now associated only with the church associated only with the people i brought to know the lord jesus christ where is my hope where is my joy where is my crown of rejoicing for ye for are not even ye in the presence of our lord jesus christ at is coming in verse 20 in verse 20 it says for ye are our glory and joy it said e there is no satisfaction in any other place and i don't go any other place i'm just here for you and for you alone and if i'm going to have any hope any joy any happiness any fulfillment it must come from you for ye are our glory and joy let's come now to point number three point number three is the quality of practical approved sacrifice the quality of practical approved sacrifice we're coming back to first corinthians chapter 9 and we're reading from verse 11 first corinthians chapter 9 verse 11 if we have sown unto you spiritual things is it a great sin if we shall reap your carnal sins, 
spiritual things, carnal things. What does that mean? Paul the Apostle is saying, if we have ministered to you spiritual things, and now you have hope of heaven, we have ministered to spiritual things, we have salvation, we have ministered to spiritual things, we have holiness without which no man shall say the Lord, we have ministered unto you spiritual things, and you have the power of the Holy Ghost in your life, we have ministered to you spiritual things, and you have a home in heaven, home in glory. Is it anything great? Anything strange? Anything spectacular? If we don't have a house to stay and then we have a room where you, where you have a mansion and we stay there, we've given you spiritual food and the meat that keeps you strong and prepares you for heaven. You see it any strange thing, any great thing, if the normal natural food to feed the body, if we came to you and we have that food, we have given you the joy of salvation and the joy that your name is written in heaven. Is it any great thing if your fellowship and your friendship and your coming near will put a smile on our face and will have joy can all things? If we have ministered unto you in preparing you for heaven, is it any great thing that you will contribute to our joy here on earth? That's the question it was asking them and you can think about the same thing between you and your pastors between you and your leaders between you and your ministers when you are sick they come when you're sick or when you have any problem they organize prayer and they all pray and pray for you when he's sick when he's lonely when he has any challenge when he has any problem you stay in your houses you say I, I wonder what's happening to our leader i wonder what's happening to our preacher and then when you see going to come to the district and wake us up again all you want is to receive from him do you ever give anything any love in a practical way food and material things carnal things once they have ministered unto us spiritual things or is it that you just suck them dry until there's no strength anymore and then even when they might be so weak and down you're still saying we're waiting for you when are you going to do this when are you going to do that we must understand what paul the apostle was saying he said we're human beings too in in fact, he said, we have so much trouble that we are pressed beyond measure. And we are the sentence of death in our depression, in the stress upon our lives. But he says, God, the God of all comfort came and he gave us consolation. And then he's up again to minister everywhere. But he said, you can play your part too. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing? Is it a strange thing? Is it an unheard of thing? If we reap your carnal things, look at verse 12. In verse 12, if others be partakers of this power over you, are we not the rather? He said, are not we rather? If other people you don't know, you listen to them over the radio or you watch them accidentally on the internet and then they begin to speak and they say, we need this, we need this, we want to build an edifice, we're building a cathedral. It, you don't even know them. You don't know their lifestyle. You don't know all their doctrines. But they speak in such a motivational way that you dip your hand in your pocket and then you write a check of big sum that you don't give to your own church it says if others are partakers of this power of this right of this benefit over you 
are not we rather, are we not number one in your thinking of provision? Should we not be number one? Should our church not be number one as you give because we're ministering directly unto you? Are not we rather, nevertheless, we have not used this power, we have not used this privilege, but suffer all things. We know you have food, but we are hungry and we never talk. We know you have, you know, the clothes you are not wearing and our children are not uh, well clothed, but we don't talk. We know that, you know, you are healthy and strong and we're just managing and yet you have the possibility of contributing to our lives to make us strong and to make us run faster than we're running. And yet we're not using all that privilege he was telling the Corinthians, you Corinthians, you are not doing your duty. You Corinthians, you are not showing appreciation the way you need to show appreciation. We suffer all things less. We should hinder the gospel of Christ. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, do ye not know that they which minister about holy things labor of the things of the temple? Don't you know that the Levites who serve, they serve in holy things and then they ought to be ministered to, they ought to be held, they ought to be encouraged and they should not suffer in any way just because they have committed their lives in serving the Lord. And it says they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. That is those who have abandoned their own work secular work and they have abandoned all the things they could use to cut edges and to make ends meet and all the things that we members are running after and then you have lunch there and you have house there there are some of us who are here who have committed a full time everything we've got into serving the Lord uh, you say but the church is paying us yes if the church is paying us how much is the church paying us and you need to understand that those full-time workers it's sacrifice it's commitment it's because of the vision for you before you get to the meeting many of them they are here already hours before you come and they have to put this in place and put this in place and put that in place because they want to be ready when you come after we finish the service and then you are going back home they have to stay with behind collect this and gather this and everything together so so that all those things will be well preserved and then we come the next time and you just say praise the Lord our church is wonderful look at how clean and look at how everything is I enjoy the service do you only enjoy and but do you understand do you recognize the people who are doing making the sacrifice so that we can be everything we ought to be and what does the scripture say that those who minister in holy Holy things are partakers of the temple, and they which wait at the altar, they are partakers with the altar. In verse 14, in verse 14, even so, as the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel, they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel should live of the gospel. Uh, Paul the apostle was available and he was serving them. What he Paul the apostle had in need and then he said, I need to spend some extra time on tent making. I need to spend some extra time on providing for my need you will miss a part of his service. That's why, if it were possible, you so take care of that Paul, son of Tarsus, who is committed in everything now, so that they will be available when you need them. They will not be thinking, after we finish the service today, what am I going to eat, and how is this going to take place? And they are there, and they are weak, their stamina is not as strong like the members the ministers should be as fit 
physically strong, as emotionally stable as the members of the church. If the members of the church that we are serving, if they are stronger than we are, if they are healthier than we are, if they are more stable than we are, if the members are happier than we are, something is wrong. We must match up everything and lift up our ministers so that as they are ministering to us and they remain strong, they will minister more and more in Jesus' name. And those of us there too who have been in the church for a long time, we don't leave the ministry only to them. We say, I'm available to you. I can give a helping hand. I can hold you up like Aaron and all lifted up the hand of Moses. And then the victory was won for the whole nation. Let's look at verse 15. In verse 15, but I have not I've not used, I've used none of these things. My right there, I've given it up, and my, you know, provision there, I let it go. Paul the Apostle said, I've used none of these things, never, neither have I reached these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should take my glory, should make my glory in void, should make my consecration void. You see, how then was uh, Paul being maintained? There were people in other churches, there were people in other congregations that knew that Paul the Apostle could not be on tent making all the time. He would need time so that he'll minister the best unto us. He needs time to pray. He needs time to plan. He needs time to prepare. He needs time to do everything so that spiritually he will be up and doing, up and running. That's why you look at Philippians, Philippians chapter 4. In Philippians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 13. In Philippians chapter 4, we're looking at verse 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. That's Paul the Apostle. He said, if I need to go hungry and with that hunger preach the gospel, I can. If I'm full and I have enough food to eat and have strength to preach, and then I preach, I can. All things, whether I'm hungry, I'm well fed, I can do all things things through Christ which strengthened me. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, notwithstanding, ye have done well that she did communicate with my affliction. While the Corinthians were negligent, the Philippians, they said, we know the need of that man. He cannot be on the field every time making tests. He said, you have done well because you did communicate with my affliction. But in verse 15 now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving but ye only you Philippians, you were watching every move I made. I go there, I go there. And all the churches were just saying, we're expecting Paul. And when he comes, he will come in the power of the Spirit of God. But you were very thoughtful. You were very considerate that you communicated with me like no other church did. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, we're reading from verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. We're looking at verse 1. It says, Moreover, brethren, we do you to which of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. In verse 3, it says, For to their power I bear the record, yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. We didn't put any pressure on them. They just knew in their heart, the apostles will need this, the, the prophets, the teachers, our leaders, our district pastors, our overseers, they will need this. And then in verse 4, it says, 
praying us, pleading with us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry to the saints. In verse 5, it says, And this they did not as we hoped. They went beyond what we would even have needed, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. That's what the other churches did, but the Corinthian church that came behind in no gate and they were fed very well spiritually, they lacked behind in giving to the apostle. Or the apostle said, it's all right. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But he gave the example of others that came to hell along. I pray you'll be one of the helpers. I'll be a helper. Ah, look at you. I will be a helper. I'll be a good support. And the gospel will prosper through all of us, ministers and members, in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and commit ourselves to the Lord, that we will serve the Lord without reservation. And all that Paul the Apostle has spoken about, we too will rise up and we will do our part. You will do your part. You pay your tithe and offering to support the church. And then you go beyond tithe and offering. Any special need in the local church, any special need in the lives of our ministers, in the children, families of our ministers, you'll come to the forefront and you will make sure that we support support each other and we give to the Lord and we give to each other and this work will prosper in our hands together in Jesus name let's pray brethren the Lord has visited us again today in a very practical way 